astro sign friends Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, friends. Here is your special Halloween gift of guidance. And this year, we have a new Halloween gift of guidance called Tarot or Theater. For a more healthier celebration of Halloween, you are going to guess if you are going to be presented with messages from the tarot cards or theatrics. Let's find out. Come in. Who is it? It is me, O oh Hierophant. Libra. Libra, I have not seen you in eons. How are you, Libra? O oh Hierophant, I have come to you to seek advice. I am in agony. Agony? Why? Well, it seems that I am waiting ages upon ages for a relationship. I give all of myself, spill all of my scales out and all over the place to give to others. But by the end, I am left with nothing. My scales are empty and I feel desolate. What should I do? Well, you have presented an issue that all you Libras grapple with. Yes, we definitely do. What shall we do, Hierophant? Well, we have to look into the deeper reasons why you spill yourselves and empty all that you have inside for others so that you are left with nothing and become ghosts. <laughs> oh, yes, I do feel like a ghost, so empty and invisible. What shall I do? <laughs> well, let us first find out why. Why do you give all of yourself to others when they do not give anything to you? You know, I have kept pondering this question, O oh Hierophant, and I can only come up with that I care about others. I do not want them to be in want or need, so I give of myself for them. Yes, but are you sure it's really for them? Because if you were aligned with your principle of the scales, you would give to them as much as they give to you, which would balance out the amount of giving and taking on your scales. Hmm. Yes, I do see what you are saying, Hierophant, but I think that I give more because I care about the other this is a caring out of all of my heart for the other person. Well, 
Let's see. Are you sure you don't give of yourself? Because you fear that if you don't give, you will not be appreciated and cared for by the other person? What do you mean, O Hierophant? What I mean is, are you sure you are not giving to others because of your ego or recognition of all that you give? Well, I can't imagine why you would say something so negative and pessimistic, Hierophant. I always give because I care for the other. I have feelings for what they must be going through. I put myself in their place so that I understand how they feel. Aha! Uh -huh. But if we dig deeper, we find that the reason that you give so much is because you fear losing the relationship and you feel your self-respect will be into thin air by the other party. You feel you have to give to be worth that relationship. Well, now that you put it in those terms, yes, I feel that I always have to give to be worthy of a relationship because that's what a relationship is. It involves giving and taking and to be in one we have to give just as much as we take. Aha, yes, you have to give, but not more than you take. That is going to cause you to feel disturbed and you are going to feel ghoulishly empty as you do right now. What is your suggestion for me, O Hierophant? I suggest that you stop with the giving. You wait for another person to reach out and give to you first because that's how you know that they are serious and they see your worth first. What if such a relationship never comes along? Never say never. In life there are always people and it will take you to Assert yourself and make it known that you are not going to be the first one to give. You have done that many times before and now it is up to others to give to you first because they are going to be rewarded right back. And doubly so with your care. Ask the ghosts of Halloween to bring you an equal relationship. Because it will be a beautiful surprise. <laughs> oh, Hierophant, thank you for your words of wisdom. Happy Halloween! All right, who is next? It's me, Scorpio. Oh, goodness, the tower, Scorpio, it is you. Why have you come to see me? Well, Hierophant, I am in the Depths of despair. I am a sinking dungeon. I don't know what to do next. Well, why?
Why are you a sinking dungeon? Because I cannot give up my obsessive tendencies where I completely wrap myself around a person or a job and cannot let go of them. I'm tied to them like corn on a cob. Ah, I see your obsessive tendencies. You see? You see them too. Why do I have them, O Hierophant? Well, to figure out why we must dig deeper or down into the ocean depths of your soul. <laughs> well, what do you see down in those depths, O Hierophant? I see that you are obsessive over others because you are trapped inside of yourself. What do you mean, O oh Hierophant? Why am I trapped inside of myself? I don't see that. I see that I am floating freely on top of the waves. Ah, but you are not. You see, the people are so desperate inside you that they had to break free of your windows to fall out. They were desperate for freedom. And those people represent your inner ego. My ego? How can you say that? Because... You, Scorpio, have an imprisoned ego that is behind every obsession. You never want to lose that career or relationship because it means a destruction of your ego and one that will no longer let your ego exist because you form your ego in relationship to that person or career. So, to end your obsessions, you have to break free from your ego. Release it into the water, let it sink to the bottom and operate from a sense of noble concern for others. I see, I see what you're saying. I do feel trapped inside of myself. Of course you do, Scorpio. That is what obsession is. You are trapped into a mindset of having to be around people or careers because you want them to pay allegiance to you to satisfy that ego. But when you set your ego free, you're not binding anybody. You've set them free to be around whomever they want to be. And those who come out of freedom to you and remain loyal to you do so because of your noble self that is not your ego, but a self that is free to be ye without having to tie anyone to ye. And those who come to you freely are going to see that you have not bound them to you out of the greediness of ego, but out of a free choice to be around ye, and ye around them. So you are coming from a healthier place of respect for free will instead of forcing your will.
on them. Ah, oh, Hierophant, you have pulled my soul out of the depths of despair and lightened its load like the ghouls of the air. Ha 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 ha. Next, who is there? It's me, O oh Father Hierophant, Sagittarius. Oh, Sagittarius? Sagittarius, how dost thou fare? Oh, Hierophant, I am in great despair. Why? Well, that's what I came to see you about. Do you have time to spare? Yes, of course. I'm here seeing all you astro signs and pulling you up out of your ghoulish predicaments. <laughs> well, I have a huge problem, Hierophant. What is this huge problem, Sagittarius? It cannot be greater than the centaur himself. Oh, but it is. I am being ridiculed, ostracized, penalized by suitors who keep complaining that I'm not marriageable material because I am non-committal. Hmm, do you think you are non-committal? Well, yes, I'm Sagittarius after all. We are free to go as we please, travel the mile, unrestricted and unrestrained. Ah, but you see, that is exactly what the suitors are saying the problem is. When you are so unrestricted and unrestrained, you are not bound to any relationship. So it seems that you are not even in a relationship. And your suitors are going to look elsewhere to feel they are in a relationship. But when I've told each of them during the times I was seeing them that I wanted to be in a relationship with them and that I was in a relationship with them, they still didn't accept it because you were not living in accordance with the terms of a relationship, which are to spend time with the one you love. That's how you prove that you deserve that relationship. But I want to be free. I'm a Sagittarius. I must be free to be me. Well, nobody is stopping you not to be you. But ask yourself this question. Why do you want to be free? Because it's a feeling that I can't live without. I would suffocate if I was not free. Ah, there you have dug up your own ghost. Oh, what? What do you mean that I've dug up my own ghost? You have just dug up your fear. Your fear of being tied down. Fear of being bound in a relationship. Why do you think you fear to be bound in a relationship? Well, because it's like I said before. I don't want to feel suffocated and I need to be free to roam and travel to and fro so that I can grow. But you too can grow from a relationship. And it seems to me you fear a relationship not because it will not let you free but because it will restrict your ego. Oh, 
What do you mean by restrict my ego? It will limit your tendencies to boast and impose yourself on others. But that's what I'm against. I'm not even trying to impose myself. On but you are, Sagittarius. You are trying to impose this idea of freedom on everyone else. Without understanding that, they can be just as free in a relationship. Think about all that you can accomplish in a relationship when your partner is vacuuming the carpets and washing the dishes. That leaves you freedom so that you will not need to be tied down to that kind of house maintenance. But to be fair, you would have to take turns to take on that house maintenance so your partner can be free which is a value I know you would want your partner to have. So are you saying that freedom can be found in relationships? Yes, of course freedom can be found in relationships. And it's found when you unbind your ego and allow it to be as free as you claim it to be. Allow it to be free to experience the majestic love of a relationship that will help you to soar in every way. A relationship will be there when you need support and will be there to lessen the load on you. There is freedom in relationships. And soon you will see that it allows you to be free when you give it opportunity. Ah, oh, I see what you are saying, Hierophant. I think I know exactly what I need to do. I need to pick up my baton, turn it into a bouquet, grab this golden goblet mixed passion fruit juice inside and gather the wand into a candle holder and take my sword and carve my love for the partner with whom I will spend the rest of my life onto every tree bark I can find. Well, it looks like you have your work cut out for yourself, Sagittarius. Ha 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 ha. Yes, I do. Thank you, Hierophant. Hello, who is there? It's me, Capricorn. Oh, Capricorn. Why are you here? Well, I'm having a lot of trouble losing my relationships cause all my former partners have called me manipulative. I don't see myself as manipulative. Are you sure, Capricorn? Don't you tell your partners what to do? Well, that's cause they don't know what to do. Well, that's the whole problem. Your manipulation we have to look deep inside its gloomy depths and there we find that your manipulation comes from insecurity insecurity what do you mean insecurity you have an insecure ego that's why you have to control others. You feel you need to twist them to do your bidding. Because if they got to know the real you, they wouldn't respect or like you anymore. Hey, that's not true. Ask yourself, do you try to get them to feel a certain way or put words in their mouth when they don't mean them. Well, 
There you go. That shows that you are manipulative. Well, what do I do about it? You have to listen. Listen to them. Respect the way they feel. Respect the way that they talk and listen to what they mean by asking them. Listen and respect them and their lives by letting them live according to their own set of guidelines. Uh, the same way that you live by yours. I guess I see what you're saying now, Hierophant. Each time that you feel the urge to control, control yourself first and listen to the others, what they are saying, what they are doing, before imposing yourself on them. You'll keep a relationship longer that way. It will stand the test of time. Ha 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 ha. Thanks, Hierophant. Hi, Hierophant. Aquarius, what is it that you are doing here? Well, I'm here because I'm running into a mess. My partner wants to leave me because she keeps saying I treat her so impersonally. Ah, uh, but... Don't you, Aquarius? You are as impersonal as the groups that you lead. Well, yes, because feelings, emotions scare me. I'm the kind of guy where I stick up for ideals, equality, and justice and the future, equal rights for all. Ah, yes. And so your problem is that your impersonal approach is sabotaging your relationships? Yeah, that's it. I just don't know how to be personal. I don't know how to be so emotional like they want me to be. Well, first you must recognize an important lesson. What's that? That there is no such thing as impersonal. All that you do and how you relate to others is extremely personal because you are the one doing it so you are involved think about the way you feel about the groups how you care about them that's true i do care about the groups and equal rights well if you care about them that means you have the ability to care for your partner oh i guess you see, let us see deep down into the depths of you. Your fear of the personal comes from your inability to be attached, tied down to anyone. You think it limits your freedom, but that fear comes from your ego, a selfishness of the ego that you need to tame. Well, how do I do that? By listening to your partner, taking your partner on your group leading exercises and making your partner feel that you care about them too. You are going to live your ideals of equal rights for all 
when you recognize the equal right of your partner to be cared by you. You can do it by starting a protest in the name of your partner for your partner's rights and your partner will be flattered. Gee, Hierophant, I'm so glad I came to you. You helped me through my relationship troubles. I guess I got a break free from impersonality. Ha 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 ha. That's right. Break free from impersonality. And remember that your personal touch is going to touch not only the masses, but your partner who is as important as those masses because your partner cares for you, personally cares for you. Thanks, Hierophant. Well, who do we have here? It's me, Pisces. Oh, Pisces, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yes, well, I'm here because I'm in a big, big mess. Ah, uh, you're always in a big, big mess. You're a messy sign. I know, I know, but this time I'm in over my head. Or I guess I should say, hung upside down. Yes, I see that, Pisces. Well, what, what is this mess? Tell me. Well, the mess is that I... I'm told I behave in an illusionary way, that I'm untruthful, dishonest, and I fudge the facts, and I don't know what to do about it. Well, you fudge the facts. Let's see. Why do you do it? Let's look into you. And deep in the depths we find there your fears. Your fears because you do not want to be seen for flaws. You want to emit an image of infallibility of being virtuous. So virtuous that you are untainted. Well, that's not possible for any human for we all have flaws. And so for you, you have to embrace those flaws and speak them as they are. When you speak them as they are, you will be telling the truth and people will not call you or refer to you as a liar anymore. Do you mean that I have to share all that I do wrong? All the mistakes I make? Yes, to be honest, share those mistakes because People are going to see and feel for the real you. Nobody is immune from mistakes. You don't have to cover them up and create some far-fetched illusion. When you are who you are, flaws and all, people will see that you are true to you. A human with limitations as we all are, making it easier to relate to you. But I'm afraid the flaws will drive people away from me. Well, don't be, because people have flaws. What you have, they too have, and so they will 
come to you like a magnet and you will have lots in common to talk about and help each other through the flaws. You can change your perspective of those flaws just as seeing them as upside down and in seeing them another way you'll be able to channel them into strengths. For example, you can write your own play about your flaws. Have people come and sit down with a good laugh over all the mistakes you made. Think about how much you'll earn from such a theatrical production. There, your flaws would pay you off. So, my friend, embrace those flaws and help people know them and work through them. Thank you so much, Hierophant. You saved me. Who is there? It's me, Ares. Oh my goodness, Ares. I haven't seen you in ages. Well, High Priestess, hello. I have journeyed to see you from far. Because you are a healing star. Oh, how you flatter me, Aries. And so, do tell, why are you here? Oh, High Priestess, I am in utter despair because I lost my Libra. Oh, yes. Yes, I heard Libra had come to see the Hierophant. Hierophant told me all about how distressed she was. She did. Did she talk about me? No, not you particularly. But she was upset at no relationship sticking in her life. Yes, we broke up because she said I was selfish, didn't even consider her thoughts and feelings, didn't give her any attention, and gave attention to other women. Well, did you? Yeah, I did. And I made a huge mistake. Oh, you bad, bad Aries. I know. I don't know what to do about my selfishness, High Priestess. It's just I don't even see it as selfishness. I see it as independence. I'm not used to having someone else tagging along. You know what I mean? Mm, no, I don't. Because I am given to a life of service. And in service... I always have the other whom I am serving in my thoughts. Well, so what do I do about this selfishness, High Priestess? Well, you have to make your self-goals be about others. What do you mean, make my self-goals be about others? Well... Instead of making goals for yourself, for a top paying job or a relationship that caters to you, you're going to make your goals about helping someone close to your heart or a partner with achieving their dream of a high paying job and in a relationship make your goal about listening to and empathizing with others 
channel all your bravado and courage into sticking up for the feelings and thoughts of others. Start your day calling your partner, asking your partner what your partner needs before you move on to your goals for the day. That way you will learn to not be so selfish anymore, but focused on relationship and the needs of your partner. Record songs and send them to your partner. Serenade your partner using kitchen utensils as musical instrumental tools. If you don't have musical instruments, that's the easiest way to get your partner's attention and sing your heart out a love song to your partner. Uh, I, I never thought of these ideas before. I knew you would help pull me through, High Priestess. That's it. I have to write in my partner's goals in my daily planner, work on them first, and then get to mine. Yes, but remember to do it together with your partner. Work together on your partner's goals with your partner and invite your partner to work with you on your goals. And remember, keep those wandering eyes away from others because those partners belong to other partners and they are getting enough of their due attention from those partners. But your partner needs your attention because Libra is not getting any from you when she deserves it the most after all she does for you. So you're going to prioritize her first and show her as an example to all the people, including women you meet. So there is no question that you care for your partner. Well, thank you for helping me to no longer be selfish, but self-aware and aware of others. I'm glad, Aries. Now run off to Libra and show her your self-awareness for her. Well, who is there galloping? so slowly towards me. It's me, Taurus, High Priestess. Taurus? Goodness, how long has it been? Well, not so long, High Priestess. I just saw you and Hierophant the other day during our spiritual Astro Retreat. Oh, yes, yes, I do remember you, Taurus. But so soon since then, you have issues come up? Yeah, well, my partner left me because my partner feels that I'm emotionally unavailable. And I'm so stoic, I never show my feelings. And they don't feel safe with me emotionally. Let me guess, is your partner Scorpio? Yeah, yeah, it is. Hmm, big surprise. Well, my friend Taurus, we have to look into why you put on this brave front, stoic as a stone, that no emotion can be seen through you. I don't know why I do it, that's cause I'm a man, I guess. No, no, it's not just that you are a man. It's because you fear being less than brave and courageous as society expects you to be, to fit in. You fear standing out from the crowd. 
Yes, because I'm a traditional type. Fitting in is what I do. But that will not allow you to fit in with the emotional needs of a partner. You cannot hide your emotions all the time. It's healthy to let them out so that you are confirming to others that you care about them. But don't they see it through my actions, through my bringing home a bouquet of flowers to show my appreciation? No, because that's another material good. You are trying to show you care through material goods. That does nothing for the emotions. You need to shower affection to your partner with a warm energy. The way you rub your hands over a furnace without burning them, of course, and warm them. And that warm sensation is what you emit to others. You bring out that warm character that you have inside. And in affectionate and fond tones, speak to your partner. Talk about your feelings, how much you love them. And that is going to give them that warm feeling that you have inside of you so that they become warm inside too. Throw off the yoke of societal expectation. Get in touch with your emotions and bring them out and shower those whom you care with affection openly. Thank you, High Priestess. I know what to do. I must go and seek Scorpio and shower her with the warm, glowing coals of love that I have inside. That is exactly right. And she will just melt back into your arms. Thank you, High Priestess. Oh my, is that you, Gemini? Yeah, it's me, High Priestess. Gemini is in the house, whoopee! Oh, Gemini, what brings you here? Well, my duality brings me here. I've been called double-faced by former partners and friends. Nobody is in my life anymore. What do I do? Oh, you cannot make your mind about anyone, Gemini? No, because what one has, excitement, enthusiasm, energy, the other lacks. And what that one has, tranquility, peacefulness, solitude, the other lacks. And so I can't make up my mind because they all lack. Ah, Gemini, there you are with your fickle side. Yes, I fear I'll never have a relationship. Well, it's not that you will never have a relationship. It's that the person whom you need in a relationship needs to be multi-talented and multi-dimensional with different traits. They have to be as exciting as a racing match, but also tone it down to the serenity of a light breeze. Yeah, I do need to have somebody with these multiple modes of living. Yes. And so you'll want to find somebody as changeable as you. So when you're looking for 
a fun and exciting time, your partner can bring out that daring side and jump into the car or bandwagon with you and head off to a party on your journey. But when you are tired out and in the mood for intellectual stimulation, your partner can join you, maybe read a novel to you, or the two of you pick out scenes from famous plays and act them out. You basically need a playful partner to match your changing whims and inclinations. That's right, but how do I find such a changing partner? Well, there are so many ways. You can sign up for wildly different meetups and look for the same people attending those wildly different meetups like hiking groups and literary groups and join them and look for people who have joined in to these multiple groups because there you're going to find them as widely eclectic as you are. <gasps> That's smart, High Priestess. You are so smart. Yep, I know. You need to look for that two in one, Gemini, because you are two in one. <laughs> Ask around and have your friends recommend you their two in ones. And you're just going to find your very own two in one. Oh, and uh, don't roam elsewhere once you've found your two in one. Don't eye other two in ones because those two in ones will be busy juggling their own two in ones. And you, my friend, will already have your hands full with the two in one apple of your eyes. Oh, who is there? It's me, High Priestess, Cancer. Oh, Cancer, how are you, my lady? Oh, I am well, High Priestess. All except for... <laughs> Why are you crying? Because the person of my dreams left me alone saying that I was so emotionally mushy, too much so for them to handle. <laughs> oh, put away those tears, Cancer friend. We have to look into why you are so emotional. I have so many feelings and care for others. Just like my partner who's gone. <laughs> oh, forget about your partner, Cancer. We have to first fix this emotional mushiness. Why do you feel so emotionally overbearing? Because I care. That's why. Is that so wrong? Well... The way that you care is driving your partner away. What you need to do is to care with a distance or show this distant kind of care where you're not smothering them to the point that they feel they cannot breathe. Oh, but they're so lucky to have me. I cook all the time for them. Make them delicious turkey cranberry broth and fill in lima beans into their lime juice, all for their health. Yes, I'm sure they appreciate you, Cancer Lady, 
but it's the emotions that seem to weigh down on them. And your emotions... I know that there are times when you can't control them, but let's look at why you have these powerful emotions. They are coming from you because of your fragile ego. You're deep down afraid of getting hurt. And so you emotionally manipulate others so that they will not abandon you. It comes from a fear of abandonment. How can you say that? I'm not a scaredy cat or fear of being abandoned. Then why else do you unleash these overpowering emotions over your partner to the point where they cannot breathe and they don't know where to go or what to do? Well... Yes, I do fear. I do fear losing them. Well, you shouldn't fear that, Cancer Lady, because the partner who truly loves you is going to stand by you no matter what and only has eyes for you and you're going to know it because of your intuitive sense that they see you and they love who you are. You won't have to ever emotionally manipulate them. That's exhausting for your emotions. Let your emotions be and love naturally. Think about, Cancer Lady, your emotions as waves coming out of you and going back to you. The ebb and flow of feelings. And so, release the ebb and flow of your emotions. When you are happy, draw a portrait of your partner. Your partner will love you to be engaged in an activity that involves them instead of moping over them. And when you are sad, cook your partner a mushy meal like squash oatmeal and have your partner see that you are busy instead of wallowing around in sadness you're taking action being productive for your partner and your partner will not feel so overpowered by you oh thank you high priestess i do believe you saved me i need to remember to let my emotions come and go naturally and channel them helpfully. There you go, Cancer. And now who do we have here? It's me, Leo, my dear High Priestess. How are you? Oh, Leo. I'm well as can be, and you? I'm over the sun. <laughs> well, then why are you here to see me if you are over the sun? Oh, hi, priestess. <laughs> I hate to tell you the bad news, but I've been dumped recently. Oh, dear Leo. Why? Why were you dumped? Well, the dumper said that I was so overly dramatic and couldn't be handled anymore. That I'm boastful and I show off and it gets on everybody's nerves. Mm, I see. Well, you are rather flashy. Hey! No, I mean it in the best way. But let's look into your depths. Why are you so showy and dramatic? Well, I want to show everyone my talents and gifts. I'm a natural-born star, after all. Um, well, Leo, that is what is turning people away from you. 
I think you are overcompensating for an insecure ego. How dare you call me insecure? I feel pretty secure. Well, if you felt secure, you wouldn't need to exaggerate your worth. You would share it just the way it is, equal to everyone else, not above, not below anybody else. Well, I see what you're saying. This added drama, dramatic pretense from you is turning people away because they don't get to see the real you. We only have one life to live. Instead of hiding behind a mask, we need to show the real ourselves, the reality of who we are, publicly but also one-on-one -on -one in relationships. Because it takes too much extra energy to pretend to be whom we are not, to over-dramatize and exaggerate just to feel important. We lose energy and we're exhausted at the end. But when we share exactly who we are, your firm assertiveness and your generous, thoughtful and warm personality, through your heart-centered approach. That will pull others to you like fireflies. And what you can do, actually, is pretend that you are speaking the lines from the script of your heart, natural lines coming from you, and not artificially imposed through a dramatic script. You see, the real you is going to come straight from the heart. So speak those words from the heart. Can they be grand words if I'm feeling grand? Yes, of course. But do not over embellish and over exaggerate them. Speak them out warmly, courageously, and caringly so that people know you are not speaking over and above them or beneath them but equally to them practicing a moderate voice yes moderation comes a long way think goldilocks and the three bears not too high not too low just equal, evenly pitched. Thank you, High Priestess. I am evenly so grateful to you. Keep shining forth your heart, Leo. Oh my, who is that shrouded figure? It's me, High Priestess, Virgo. Virgo, my good friend. I have not seen you in, well... I don't even know when I had last seen you. It seems timeless. <laughs> well, perhaps, but that's why it's far too long since I've seen you and I need it to come now. How can I help you, Virgo friend? Well, I know that I should be... The one helping you, after all, I'm the sign of service, but now I need help. Oh, well, you do know that Hierophant and I am here to help. Tell me what is going on in your depths. Well, deep down, I am lonely. I feel that others run away from me because of my perfectionistic tendencies. Ah, Virgo. Why is it that you have such a strict code that you seek to conform yourself to? I don't know. My light does not show me any answer to that very discerning question. Well, you are the sign of discernment, and the answer is that you come from a sense of 
an insecure self where you do not feel good enough by society standards. So you set up these unrealistic expectations to perform to an untenable code of perfection. But realize, Virgo, that perfection does not exist. It is a societal construction. You know, that is very true, High Priestess. I never thought about it that way. Yes, it is, because perfection, like the symmetry of lines or matching colors, that is an expectation from society of how order and perfection looks like. But that's not reality. In reality, we are colorful and curved in different shapes and forms. See the pomegranates on my veiled curtain? They do not have straight lines. They are curved. Same with us. There is no perfect world except for the one that we see in our mind's eye and so you need to break free of this untenable perfection and do not hold yourself or anyone else accountable to it, but embrace yourself and others as you are. Multicolored, multi-curved, and multi-visionary because we do not live according to one vision. There are many visions that shape our world. So, open your arms to all of them, Virgo. And when it comes to a partner, open up to your partner. Open up to your partner's vision. Bring it together with yours. And do what you are so talented at, which is to take the steps to bring your visions into reality by writing down a plan, step-by-step -step plan of what you are going to do every day to make those visions come true. And not just your vision, your partner's vision too. You're going to tackle both visions together. I see exactly what you are saying, High Priestess. And when you tackle another person's vision along with yours, you will no longer be lonely because you will include another person in your life. And lose the lantern, Virgo. Keep your hand free so you can hold the hand of your partner freely, lovingly. Thank you, High Priestess. Let go of unrealistic standards and... Watch society open arms to you because society will see that you are living humanly. And after all, we are all humanly here. That's right, High Priestess. And with that, you are going to build inner security of self because you know that you are worthy without needing to construct yourself superficially. Thank you, High Priestess. You have lighted my way forward. Well, that's why Hierophant and I are here. To show all you astro signs the light. Remember, whenever a problem comes up, dig it up and expel it out. And be bold enough to face who you are. Have no fear as Halloween is here. Happy Halloween! Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to the Creative Fecundity Incorporated YouTube channel here.